In Quran, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, by which Allah guides those who pursue. By which Allah guides those who pursue his pleasure to the ways of peace and brings them out from darkness into the light by his permission and guides them to a straight path. Allah guides those who pursue his pleasure. So let's say a friend in the group is 77 years old. It's very hard to study, pick up the book. But let's say if that friend has read one verse. Today we are studying, let's say, chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. For pleasure of Mullah, if you were to read this verse, what does Allah say in Quran? By which Allah guides those who pursue his pleasure to the ways of peace and brings them out from darkness into the light. It is his promise that if you were to do this, he will bring you out of the darkness into the light by his permission and guides them to a straight path. We have Mola's permission. We have, we have Mola's blessing. He's guiding us. Are we listening? Allah guides whoever seeks his pleasure to the ways of peace. And that way is what? Siratul Mustaqeem. Siratul Mustaqeem. Allah guides those who seek his pleasure to the ways of peace, to the path which is Sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Mustaqim has four levels. Shariat, Tariqat, Hakikat and Marika. When the Shariat came in, during the time of Prophet, that time was called Time of Shariat, Dore Satta. When things were concealed, they were hidden. The meaning, the Tawil was hidden. It was time of Sharia. And that's the first step in the journey of the religion. This step is like a nighttime, which is dark. Therefore, everything is hidden. Very simple explanation. Everything is hidden. But it is right to follow the Sharia because at that time, that is the command. Shariat can also be understood with an example of a newborn, a newborn child up to the age of two years old, who is taught, moved, fed by parents. Whereas in Tariqa, this child has grown up to, let's say, the age of 10 years old who uses the strength which he gained from mother's milk, meaning Sharia. The child first sits, crawls, then stands up and then starts walking. He may also use the word to communicate, but he's able to share any wisdom as he does not know the complete truth. He still consults his mother. Tariqat in the religion is just like that. Still we are following the Sharia, but Tariqat is a step ahead. During the time of Tariqat, there is a light of stars at night. So still you can see a few things. And you follow the path in the light of the stars. So the moment, whatever practices one does, it's tariqa, it's tariqa, following the sharia, but it's the tariqa. Then comes the step of hakika.
Hakikat is like seeing things in the light of moon. It is the truth of religion, tariqa, imam, prophet, parman, Quran. It is the truth of religion. And at the end of this step, a true woman, a hakiki woman, finds the truth. In chapter 4, verse 150, Allah says, Lo, the, those who disbelieve in Allah, those who disbelieve in Allah and his messengers, and seek to make distinction between Allah and his messenger, and say, we believe in some and disbelieve in others, and seek to choose a way in between. A kicking woman does not do that. And the last step is the step of marifat. So at the step of hakikat, it is understood that it is a path, a ladder, it is not a destination. But woman who has reached to the level of hakikat, he or she now has a map with clear vision where he or she needs to go to get to the stage of fana filima. That stage is yet to be attained. It's like a student studying in a university. It's an example of hakikat. A university student may, may not go to university as he used to go to school. He may not show up even in the university for whole one week, but he knows what are the expectations and he knows the consequences of not meeting those expectations. He is accountable for his actions and he knows his focus is on the outcome, the results. He does not care what his friends are doing, what his family is doing. He is focused on his achieving the goal. And his means and ways are very different from other people because he is at the stage of university. He is in the university. A person who is at the university level, he knows what are the expectations, what is accountability, and what are the consequences. Nobody tells him to do what he needs to do. He does it with his own free will. Then comes the marifat. Marifat is like the light of sun. In the middle of the day, it's bright. Everything is visible. There's no doubt. There's no shadow. There's no darkness. Everything is evident, unveiling everything. A moment reaching to this stage experiences true merging true mono-reality, being one with the Imam. Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah has told us already that this is end time, meaning unveiling time. It is Dore Qiyamat, Dore Kash. Meaning everything is going to come out from concealment. Chapter 42, verse 52. Chapter 42, verse 52 says, And thus we have revealed to you an inspiration of our command. You did not know what is the book or faith, but we have made it a light by which we guide whom we will of our servants. And indeed, you guide to a straight path. Who is this you? Prophet Muhammad. He is the one who is guiding us to the straight path. He is the one who gave us the progeny and the Quran. So very evidently, Prophet Muhammad is the one who is given this 
sacred duty to God till the day of resurrection. He did tell us to follow both Quran and the Imam. Our peers did the same thing. They taught us about Imam and Quranic knowledge in Dina. But at the same time, our peers have told us what is our duty, which is to continue to learn. One of the Ginanic words from Ginan Hamzil Khali, it says, Eje Gyan Dhyan, Eje Gyan Dhyan Mahe Srevo Sudpai, Mafi. Eje Gyan Dhyan Mahe Sarve Sudpai, Khoj Khoj Kar Milana. Eje Gyan Dhyan Mahe Sarve Sudpai, Khoj Khoj Kar Milana. All understanding is gained through knowledge and remembrance. By constant search, one can attain. We are expected to be searching. Are we searching or we are settled, comfortable, do not want to move? Whatever we have, we are okay. So if we are not searching, then we are not following the teachings of our Pir Maiva. So how can we be selective in listening or obeying the Farma of our peers? Again, the question for us to ourselves is, is my faith based on conviction or convenience? Another words of Ginan, Pir says, Eji ilam vina, Je vache te hero fati ne jai. Eva jiu amthi alga rakajo. To amne suhaga jihoe. He says, Any discourse without knowledge, without true knowledge, shreds the heart. Lord, keep me away from such souls so that I may remain in the state of being married only. Here, Peter is very clearly setting boundaries. That anything anyone says which is without the knowledge, it sheds his heart. And he says, keep away those souls from me. I do not want those souls because I do want to stay married to you, be merged with Imam. So in other words, we have to keep seeking this true knowledge. When we are learning, when we are students, and we are right now students, we are mustajib, we are learning, it is for our eyes to say, Imam is here, Quran is here, Ginan is here, Farman is here. All separate things. But believe me, as we were to follow this path of knowledge, remembrance, and keep walking on this path, everything becomes one. These are not separate. They are all one. It is separate for us because we don't see it. We cannot see it. The more one walks on this path, the, all these things become one. There's a hadith in which Prophet says, Ali is with the Quran and the Quran is with Ali. How is it true? I don't understand it. How Ali is with the Quran and the Quran is with Ali? What does that mean? Mora Hazrimam, we don't see Hazrimam carrying Quran all the time. So what does Prophet mean here? He is saying that Mola has Quran in his bathing. It is always with him. As we studied chapter 5, verse 15, Kajaku min Allahe kitabun wa nurun mubin. That he has sent us these both the things and they both are actually combined. It is only at the stage of marifat. Arif kamil, the one who has complete marifat, is able to see 
there is no distinction it is all one so for us these are separate things maybe difficult intimidating but if we were to take the leap of faith seek his mercy seek his help he will make it easy we live in this physical world the world of multiplicity we are so many in numbers but in quran allah says very clearly chapter 4 verse 1 that we are all born from one soul so right now i am talking to me we all are one we are we are not separate beings what i know you know what your difficulties are my difficulties we all are one because we live in this physical world right now we see each other different with different strengths and different limitations but together walking on this path we have this capability with mola's mercy blessings that we can attain the higher level of certainty to get to mono reality in quran chapter 36 verse 12 wa kulli shay'in ahsaynahu fi imamin mubin everything everything is encompassed in imam everything so quran is also encompassed in him ginans are also encompassed in him we are also encompassed in him so if everything is one right now it is our test that we see things separate individual different with knowledge certainty of knowledge his mercy his blessing we seeking courage his help we are able to understand all the miracles of imam so alhamdulillah we have had enough proofs today after these two classes i would truly hope that each friend online will have quran in their house will go back and highlight the quranic verses they hear in classes someone asked me what quran should we have so if you are a urdu reader you need to have translation of maulana maududi it is a sunni translation i have it too we need to have one sunni quran translation and shia quran to understand the differences in shia quran farmanabi for english readers you can get yusuf ali which is shia and mir ahmed is a sunni translator it's english you can get pictel too but we all need to have quran in our homes our family our youngsters have to see that we are seekers it is not enough to only follow the physical deen and then keep complaining that we are still feeling not close to mola baba in order to feel close elevate our ranks we need to have all these books in our home we have to have ginan books farman books and quran we need to let our youngsters see that we know that quran is a book which has 30 section 114 chapters 6666 verses and inshallah taala if we were to stay connected in this in classes we will know a lot more about quran i'm sure some of you are very well versed in quran but those who are still having difficulty inshallah we all will be one at one level with maula's mercy so here i will end my session if you have any question any com- comments please go ahead yali mother to all maula ali madat niamat excellent as always shukr alhamdulillah Yali Mada, thank you so much. It was good. I really enjoyed it. It was good. Yali Mada, thank you so much, Niamat. 
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم علی اللہ مدد فرما الواحد القہار علی اللہ مدد فرما توفیق تائید ہمت یاری مولا مشکل کشا مدد فرما لاسٹ ویک وی ہیڈ اسٹیبلش دیٹ دا قرآن از دا بک فار اسمائلیز in the light of Ginan and Firmans. Please, those friends who have joined today and they have not heard the last lecture, I would humbly request them to please listen to that lecture. Today we'll look into Quran being a book of education, a book of guidance from a different perspective. We all are followers of Mawla Ali. Mawla Ali being our first Imam, and our prophet, Prophet Muhammad. Mawla Ali was our first Imam and Prophet Muhammad was our first peer. Our first peer brought Quran in the form of revelation to us. That book is the book of this cycle. The Quran is the book for this cycle. Prophet Muhammad was also a Natik. Natik meaning a higher ranking prophet. Whenever we use the term Natik for a prophet, that means that he brings his own Sharia with him. Quran was revealed to him in the form of Tanzi. And Mawla Ali being the Asas Imam, meaning the foundation Imam, he was the one who did the Taweel of the Quran. Tanzil means something which descends, comes from up to down to us. Taweel is meaning going back to its origin. Now Prophet Muhammad has said in his hadith, Ana Madinatul Ilma wa Ali Babuha. Ana Madinatul Ilma wa Ali Babuha. That I am the city of knowledge, Ali is the door. Then in other hadith he says, Ana Darul Hikmata wa Ali Babuha. I am the house of wisdom and Ali is the door. In both these hadiths, Ali is the door. Why door? We all know the door is used to enter. Enter where? Door also represents a rank, a status. In hierarchy of religion, the door represents a status, a rank. There is no other door than Ali to enter into the house of knowledge and wisdom. So let's say we all are followers of Ali. So we have found the door. We are now standing at the door. Standing at the door. If we will never enter in the door, how are we going to get to the knowledge and the wisdom? Getting to Ali is like getting to the door. Surely we are very blessed to have identified the door. We are very blessed. But how long will we stand at the door? We need to enter into the house of wisdom, city of knowledge. If we were to still stay at the door, what would we gain? If someone desires elevation, knowledge, wisdom has to enter into the door. Now, when, when one enters the door, what are we seeking? It is to seek what Prophet Muhammad brought to us, the Quran. Now, Mullah is such a Rahman and Rahim. When we enter into the door, we are intimidated. We are scared. We do not know Arabic. We do not know how to study Quran. It's, it's difficult because we don't know. Mola is so merciful, whoever takes, takes one step inside, 
you know what he says let me be your guide let me take you through this city of knowledge take you through this wisdom house of wisdom so he never leaves us he always stays with us but with that free will that first step we got to take in chapter 2 verse 189 i hope that you are writing it down and those friends who have been with me who study quran with me i am sure that you have your qurans open up in front of you and you are highlighting your quranic verses we are discussing and thank you for doing that those who do not have quran in front of them please take out your notebooks and write it down and then you don't need to read the whole quran just read these verses which we are studying in class just read these verses which we are studying in class so you can do read those verses review those verses and you will feel that you have entered into the house of wisdom so the chapter 2 verse 189 it says and it is not righteousness to enter houses from the back but righteousness is one who fears allah and enter houses from their doors and fear allah that you may succeed very strange verse why would allah talk about house and the door and entering into the house from the back door entering into the house from the door those who are not righteous they do not use the door what this verse means those who are not righteous they don't use the door now if we live in our house tell me who does not use the door a thief thief will sneak in the house from the window from here or there he will not use the door and allah in quran says that if you are righteous if you fear allah enter houses from their doors now now we understand now we understand that the door if door is ali and house is the prophet who are we talking about those people who have entered the houses not from the door meaning those who have not accepted those who are not in bayya of maula ali if they were to go into the house allah is not calling them righteous meaning whoever reads quran without maula ali without being in bayya of maula ali the house is not for them they are not supposed to enter in the house so who is supposed to enter in this house smileys because smileys believe in maula ali we are in bayya of maula ali we are follower of kareem e zaman ali e zaman the house is for us how long will we stand at the door and allah says clearly in quran do not enter into the house if you are not entering from the door so today whoever we see reciting quranic verses and calling themselves big designations or big scholar names or whatever you want to call it it is quran which says it is not righteous to enter the house from other than the door so imagine each one of us today what is our status we are those righteous who have believed in the door the problem is we are not entering into the house those who still have some hesitation discomfort fear whatever it is inshallah with today's class we all will have quran in our hand 
with the name of Mawla Ali, we will enter into the Quran, the house of knowledge, the city, the house of wisdom and the city of knowledge for us. So those who think they have Quran and they don't believe in Ali, in the eyes of Allah, they are not righteous. Prophet Muhammad's hadith, hadith is a clan, which we recited in Golden Jubilee, which talks about two weighty things, Quran and his progeny. Both has to be followed. There is a reason why Imam would ask us to recite this hadith standing up during Golden Jubilee. Golden Jubilee, the time of Darbar, time of happiness, time of blessings. Why would we read this hadith? He is guiding us that we got to follow both the things. Our peers have also taught us the knowledge of the first peer. All the ginans are the essence of Quran. It is based on the knowledge of the first peer. But Prophet Muhammad was not only the peer, he was Natik too. Natik is an elevated rank. In Hududadi, in hierarchy of religion, Natik is an elevated rank. Inshallah, I will be talking about Hududadi in detail on Saturday. Mola Ali being the Asas Imam, meaning the foundation Imam. He did the Taweel of Quran. And according to Sultan Muhammad Shah's first Farman, Mullah says, this is the end time. This is the end time, time of Qiyamah. And Pir Nasir Khusro in his book, Wajedin says that during this time, during this time, Mormons will be freed from the torment of ignorance. All Mominin will be freed from the torment of ignorance as Batin will come out of concealment. Batin will come out of concealment. Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, may our souls be sacrificed to this Imam on November 25th, 1903 at Kutch. He gave this farman, which is not in English, so let me read it first. Mazhab ka jo fayda lena ho, wo batin ka hai. Mazhab ka jo fayda lena ho, wo batin ka hai. If you want to take the benefit of your religion, it is all in batin, not in zahir. Zahir ka fayda koi kaam ka nahi. Zahir ka fayda koi kaam ka nahi. Now tell me, what do we do in batin and what do we do in zahir? 99.9% .9 what we do is all zahir. And Mullah says, zahir ka fayda koi kaam ka nahi hai. Tum achhe kaam karo ki hamesha tumhara dil mein baat ni tarha. Hame dekha hi karo. Subhanallah. Mullah says, ke do good deeds. So you always in your heart see me with your in batin. Do good deeds, which are done in Zahir. So you do good deeds, but you do in such a way that you always see me in your bathing. Meaning what? You always will be having his didar. That's what he's asking us to do. Tum hume apne dil ke andruni dharam, batini dharam se dekho. You need to see me. You see me from your inner eyes, from inside you. Apna dil mazhab me or hum me rakhna. Keep your heart in your religion and in us. Elam majlis me hazir rehna. Attend all ilmi classes. How is it that ilm classes is related to batin? 
It is only with knowledge that we would understand how to open up our Batni eyes, how to get to Hakikat. So if we were to follow this Farman, meaning get to the Batin, we will have to understand how to open up our Batni eyes. And it is during the time of Kayama, all the Batin has come out of the concealment. All the knowledge is coming out. For the Mominis who seek, to understand Batin is at three levels. The first level is certainty of knowledge. Today, we are seeking knowledge. So when we seek knowledge, that's the first stage, first step. Now, even in that step, we are hesitating. Should I study Gina because those are easy? Should I leave out Quran because it is difficult? Let me read this Farman. Let me not read that Farman. All these are bazi of shaitan based on convenience, discomfort. We all have to come out of our comfort zone to be able to get to the knowledge. And remember, it is not us who is learning, who is studying. It is he himself. He is so merciful. We don't even realize it. First step of faith, leap of faith has to be taken to know how he's going to help us. Certainty of knowledge is the first step. Then comes the certainty of I. How can it be that we pray, Mola, give me your Ruhani, Nurani, Didar. Let's say we keep saying this, we keep doing Zikr. But Mola will say, okay, first take the step of certainty of knowledge. So you get certainty of I. I'm ready. I'm willing to give you certainty of I. Do you have, have you crossed the certainty of knowledge step? And we have not. So what can he do? If we ourselves are not willing to help ourselves, how can he give us the didar? Not that people don't get didar, they do. But even in didar, there are ranks, there are darja. The higher the one wants to go, the better the seeker he or she has to become. So the first step is certainty of knowledge. And the second is certainty of I. And then comes the certainty of truth. Majority of us is at the first level. We have so many groups online. Everybody, it's a variant group of friends online listening. Some of us like to do more zikr. Some of us like more ilm. Some of us like believe in physical khidmat. So we have our likes, our tendencies. But when we want to elevate ourselves, when we are serious in our elevation of our soul, we will have to understand that there are three levels of our lives. Knowing it and working on it, two different things. We have been feeding and growing physically, doing physical seva, physical kirya, physical ibadat. Mola said, Zahiri, Zahiri ka jo fayda hai, koi fayda ka nahi hai. Whatever you do physically, it's not of that benefit. Yes, there is benefit, but it's the level of benefit is not there where Imam wants to see us. Imam wants us to elevate in his spirituality and intellectual. Ruhani and Nurani level, we need to grow. So what do we need to do? We do need to nourish our soul and intellect by zikro ibadat, ilmo amal, to continue to walk on this path to progress to become pure. Intellectual nourishment is through knowledge. Right now, knowledge may seem difficult in different books, but there are three main big sources. Quran, Ginan, Farman. If we are able to focus on these three sources, he will make things easy for us. Whenever we are seeking knowledge and elevating, thinking of elevation, there is a term which we talk about in Sufism, which is riyazat, meaning practice. What has to work hard, do riyazat, do practice. Practice of studying practice of learning. 
Some of us are old and we think, oh, to pick up a book, pen, it's a big deal. And Mola says, you are never too old. So let us all come out of the comfort zone, trust in Ima. It is okay if things are not convenient for us. Let's take the challenge of learning. Learning of Batin. It could be difficult, but it's not impossible. Allah says in Quran, chapter 5, verse 15, all people of the scripture, all people of the book, there has come to you our messenger, making clear to you much of what you used to conceal of the scripture and overlooking much. There has come to you from Allah a light and a clear book. So what has Allah sent to us? A light and a clear book. Allah is telling us, O oh people of the book, He has clearly sent us the Nur, meaning Imam, and a clear book. They both are together. And Prophet Muhammad told us the same thing in Hadith is a clan. If a student were to have a book in their hands, but they don't have light, they can read it. And if the students were to have light, but no book, they can't learn anything because there is no, nothing to study. In other words, if we have Quran, but no Imam, we cannot understand Quran. If we have Imam, but no Quran, we will not learn it. So we do know that these two go hands in hand. We cannot separate it. We cannot separate it. And if we were to do that, if we were to separate these two things, 